Hello, welcome to the Sunday School lesson for July 12th, 2020. I am Katherine Moore, an Associate Minister at the White Plains Baptist Church where Dr. Johnny L. Johnson Jr. is our Senior Pastor. Today we will be studying from the Precepts for Living Sunday School Lesson Commentary. This quarter's theme is Wisdom. July's unit lesson is Wisdom in the Gospels. And today's title is The Boy Jesus. The devotional reading is Leviticus 12, 1-8. Numbers 3, 11 through 13. And our printed texts are Ecclesiastes 3, verses 1 and verse 7, and Luke 2, verses 39 through 52. Our key verse is Luke 2, verse 40, out of the New Living Translation reads, there the child grew up healthy and strong. He was filled with wisdom and God's favor was on him. Our lesson aimed, we will explore the account of Jesus' experience in the temple at the age of 12. We will sense the awe experienced by all those who witnessed Jesus' wisdom as well as Mary and Joseph's anxiety. And we will rejoice in the opportunity to know the wisdom of God. Today's lesson has three outlines. And the first one is a time for everything. Ecclesiastes 3 verses 1 and verse 7. And they read, for everything there is a season a time for every activity under heaven. Verse 7 says, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be quiet and a time to speak. These verses are part of what is called the time for everything poem. These verses are made up of a pair of opposites that show every activity has its rightful place and purpose in time. There is a time for everything, and the events of this world happen in a fixed order of things. Night turns into day. Seasons change. The process of human life from an embryo all the way through the stages of maturity, whatever the course of events, God is in control. That's, so you see, the book of Hebrew, of Ecclesiastes show how the world can, how little the world can satisfy the soul of man. That we can indulge in every earthly pleasure and still hunger and thirst. It teaches our souls that there is no rest but in God. Verse 7 says a time to tear and a time to mend. Ancient Jews would tear their clothes and sit quietly when they mourned. And when the mourning time was over, they would fix their clothes and speak. It goes on to say that to be quiet, it is a time to be quiet and a time to speak. Sometimes it's best to remain quiet um, when what we have to say causes pain or trouble for someone else. Then there is a time where our silence can be a problem when sh we should be speaking up. But it is wisdom that causes us to know when to speak and when to keep silent. In Ecclesiastes, we see there is a time for everything. And in Luke 2, we see the time has come for Jesus, for the prophecy to be fulfilled and Jesus' true nature to be publicly revealed. The second outline is the family returns home. Now, this is verse 39 through verse 40. 
and I will read those when Jesus' parents had fulfilled all the requirements of the law of the Lord, they returned home to Nazareth of Galilee. There the child grew up healthy and strong. He was filled with wisdom, and God's grace was on him. The first 38 verses of Luke chapter 2 explain verse 39. Several ceremonies were required when a baby was born, and they had already gone to these ceremonies in the temple and the presentation and the, and, and the consecration of the firstborn and even the uh, purification of the mother. Those were the requirements that Jesus' parents had fulfilled, as the verse says. And then they went home, took baby Jesus home to Nazareth. And Nazareth was a place that was known for riotous living. They were known as heathens, and, and uh, they were very sinful. Um, it was so bad that it was once asked, can anything good come from Nazareth? We may find it strange that a place like that was chosen for God's only son to be raised, for, uh, to live in for 30 years. Not only was he born in a lowly place, he was raised in a lowly environment. We would think that God's son would have been raised in a place where he would have would been sheltered from, from evil and the sins of the world. But God does not shelter us from the evils and sins of this world. That is not his idea of holiness. It's easy for a dove to keep her wings clean, flying among the air of heaven. But the challenge is to keep her wings clean and white as she flies among other dirty birds. That is holiness, to stay clean while everyone else is not. And verse 40 says the child grew up healthy and strong and he was filled with wisdom and God's favor was on him. Even in Nazareth, he grew up healthy and strong and filled with wisdom. Verse, verses 41 through 52 are the, out, the third outline Boy Jesus in the temple. Now, I'm not going to read these verses. I uh, hope that you will read these yourself at home. But to give you some background on these verses, um, it has been established that his parents were devout and they went to these uh, festivals every year. And this time when they went to the festival, Jesus was 12 years old. So, Luke had fast-forwarded 12 years to the only biblical record, uh, recorded event in Jesus' life between his birth and ministry when he was 30 years old. So they went this time to the festival, and after the eight days of the festival, they returned home to Nazareth. And they always traveled in a crowd, of a lot of family and friends together. And they had traveled one day, one whole day, before they realized that Jesus was not with them. We were wondering, how could they not know? So when they realized he was not in the crowd, they went back to Jerusalem. And after three days, that's where we are putting the emphasis on the boy Jesus in the temple. After three days, they went back and found him where else but in the temple. He was sitting among the highly trained religious teachers and having an intelligent question and answer session with them. All that heard him were amazed. Here's this 12 year old boy asking questions that showed how intelligent and how much wisdom he had. Yes, it's best that we ask questions about spiritual things. 
our faith grows and we mature in our faith when we truly desire to know the word of God. So when his parents saw him, they were amazed. They knew about Jesus and, and who he was. They were raising him. Yet they still were shocked when they saw his divinity revealed. Sometimes we parents don't always see what is outstanding in our own children. All too often we miss their potential. We see the obvious, but we fail to see the deeper side of them. That is why we must take our children to church. They hear more than we think they do when they're in church, no matter how small they are. It is said the purest waters run deepest underground before it is found. Remember, there may be more in our children than we can see at the moment, and that is potential. So when Mary got a chance, she said to her son, why have you put us through this? Why did you do this to us? Your father and I have been searching for you frantically everywhere. They had looked everywhere, yes, but the obvious place in the temple, they looked everywhere first before they went to the house of God. Do you need to find Jesus? Or do you know someone who needs to find Jesus? Just go to the temple. Just go to the Father. Matthew 33, 6 and 33 says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Mary thought her child was lost, but he was really where he was supposed to be. Only at the time she didn't realize it. If we've ever been separated from our child in the crowd, we understand it. And when she asked him why, he told her, why do you need to search? Did you not know I must be in my father's house? The King James Version said, I must be about my father's business. Now, at first, it seems as if he was being disrespectful, but that would be impossible. He was Jesus. He's perfect. The fact is, it was his heavenly father's will that he stayed behind in the temple. It was in his father's house at 12 years of age that the Jewish population was privileged to get a glimpse of his divine nature. But his parents still didn't understand. Verse 51 said, Then he returned to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them, and his mother stored all those things in her heart. Even though he was the Christ, the Son of the living God, and he was fully God, and he was fully man, his humanity made it necessary to go back with his parents because he was a minor. And he was subject to their authority and protection as his parents. Think about it. The ancient of days, the creator of everything that was made, humbled himself under the authority of his earthly parents. How much more must our children humble themselves under our authority? And Mary, being a mother, kept those things in her heart. Over time, she came to realize that the baby boy she took care of came to the world to save her and to save the whole world. The last verse said, and Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. Wisdom is one of the highest demonstrations of the Holy Spirit in our lives. While Jesus grew spiritually, he increased in wisdom and he received God's approval and support. He increased also in favor with man. It's nice to have the approval and support of man, but it is truly a blessing to have the favor and support of God himself. Thank you for watching. God bless you.